Welcome back to Angling Buzz Ice presented by Fleet Farm. This episode is going to be all about walleyes. The walleyes are always following the food in the winter. What we've done is we cut a lot of holes and the fish are like really grazing around on all these big schools of perch that are spread out. I, I look at this as just the beginning. The walleye fishing has been getting incrementally better every... Well, I'd say it's getting better. <laughs> Look at this. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> That's a Manitoba beauty right there, huh? You might find that, hey, they need to be finessed, but I always start super aggressive and see what happens. You're talking about jumping from place to place looking for active biters, and that's really what the game's been about. Follow those fish from deep to shallow and back and forth throughout the season, and you'll be a far more effective walleye angler. As ice anglers, we're always trying to fine tune and improve how we find and catch walleyes. Let's join Brad Hawthorne as he shares his strategies on this topic. That's what we came for. So finding walleyes on ice, there's a reason there's a lot of videos on this, because it's a topic that's largely explored, but people doing the research aren't highly effective with it. So I'm gonna help you guys on where to find fish and what tools to use, especially walleyes, throughout the year. So number one, you wanna have your eyes wide open, and that is having the best possible map chip you can have. And now map chips aren't just shaded colors and one foot contours. Now they have things like Smart Strike that puts you on the spot. We have things like contours that just paint your map like Picasso. So all those depth changes are right there from the tops of the rock piles to the bottom, to the flats, to whatever. So when we're talking walleye structure, we're not only talking weed lines, break lines, rock piles, and things like that. So I really look, I like break lines early on for walleye fishing. I, break lines are one of the best things because they're super highways. Brake lines are the walleyes follow them, and it gives them something to key in on to find those pockets of food. Now food is the other thing that's on those brake lines. If the walleye swims long enough, he's gonna get a meal. So brake lines are awesome. Mud flats are my absolute favorite. Mud flats for me come in late season when the bugs start to pop. That's where they live and everything from a minnow to a walleye is gonna be out there feeding on bugs, perch, and any other bait fish that's out there eating those bugs. So remember, Transitions and mud flats kind of go hand in hand when you have bugs going. Now rock piles are a mecca for just about everything. You have sculpins, perch, trout perch, shiners, all these different things will use rock piles. So rock piles, if your grandfather had a, had a favorite rock pile, there's a reason for it. And that's because they're just absolutely dynamite, usually all winter long. All winter long, if you're in a 20, 25, 30 foot rock pile, walleyes will use it consistently, usually all winter long. Now, when we move into the mud flats, like long expansive mud flats or sand flats, that is when your Mega Live and your Mega 360 comes in. You're drilling holes, you're looking for pods of fish, you're getting ahead of them, and you're targeting. So now your map chip's not just your map chip, it can be your fishing guide as well. And for, for new anglers, it's also gonna give you those starting points. So, where I start, Looking for walleyes is where I left off in the fall, and that's usually that eight to 15 feet. And in the fall, I'm using a jig and minnow. So I come back, obviously real quiet. During ice season, I target those same depths with spoons, and it's largely effective. Now, I just simply keep following those walleyes out. And you may say, well, there's, you know, there's a large expanse of 20 foot of water in between A and B. Where do those fish go? And the answer is, they just kind of slowly work out and they follow the food around. The walleyes are always following the food in the winter. They're not thinking about spawn, they're not doing anything but following food. So if you keep that in mind and then go into late ice, that is when the walleyes are gonna start regressing back into those shallow areas and it's not for food. 
it's because they're going to spawn in about 45 to 65 days. And they're preparing for that. And you're gonna see the small males move in first and then the females. So if you keep a few of these key things in mind, get yourself a Humminbird or Lake Master VX chip, get metric at that shading, start looking at those smart strike locations, and then take a, a couple of pieces of this shallow to deep and skip it around with your chips and mindful of where you're at. Like follow those fish from deep to shallow and back and forth throughout the season and you'll be a far more effective walleye angler. Now Manitoba is home to some of the best walleye fishing anywhere in the world. Our team split up to cover as much water of the province as possible. Let's head north and check in on that action. That time he ate it. <laughs> Hopefully it's a walleye. My head shakes like a big walleye. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> That's a Manitoba beauty right there, huh? Wow, I think chasing up and down, watching this thing on my, my helix, it's so fun to just play with these things. You've know, just been golfing that Northland spoon. Manitoba is a place to come for sure, there's no doubt about that. And big walleyes like that, look at that. There we go. Boy. Think they want it? Look at that. Just choked it. Oh, that's a, not a giant one, but you know what? We're catching fish of all sizes. There we go. Oh. You have relatively docile uh, uh, conditions. Right now it's cloudy and overcast, but it's actually relatively warm. Fish. Come on, buddy. Oh, there we go. The interesting thing is this guy right here. It's a pipsqueak in comparison to some of the, the pike in some of these lakes. We've been targeting wa walleyes, but we're just intermittently catching lots of, catching lots of northerns. Walleye, I think might be a walleye. I'm not sure. Nope. Walleye, nice little. I think it's a little fatty, a little fatty. Look at that guy there. Come here. Walleye. You've been bouncing around. We cut a lot of holes out in the flats. It's one thing when you get into shallow water like this, a lot of times, it, you know, we're on, in this rocky lake, it's, we're on pretty extensive flats and there's not a lot of cover, like big, big rocks on the bottom. It's sort of the big stance of uh, sand flats. And what we've done is we cut a lot of holes and the fish are like, really grazing around on all these big schools of perch that are spread out. So what we've done is cut, you know, we've cut like 30, 40 holes, you know, in a couple of acres of areas, and we're just intermittently bouncing from hole to hole to hole. It's sort of interesting because you'll get, it seems like they're just pushing the, uh, the perch around. Pretty good bite, I do know that much. You know, we're up here in northern Manitoba on Rocky Lake and a lot of these lakes up here aren't charted. So one thing we've been doing is we've been utilizing the auto chart live feature on our helixes. And this has been crucial for catching these fish. You know, we've just been kind of hole hopping around and as I go, I've just been charting along the way. And I can actually show you how I've been doing that here. So I've got a hole here I haven't been on. I just go to mark and then I just hit over it. I've got two options, got auto chart live and then waypoint and I just Hit over, hit the auto chart live, and then I can go to map. And there we go. So I've just been building this map as we go. And uh, it's given us an idea of where these fish have been staying. And as we go, I'm just gonna kind of map out this whole lake. Um, and it's really helping us catch more fish out here. This, I think, is a walleye. We've been catching some up to you know, three, four, three, four pounds here. All this water is running north into Hudson Bay. There's over 100,000 lakes in Manitoba. Come here, buddy. Back down the depths. Now that was fun.
Oh, we have a fun day ahead of us today. We're on a place that Jeff and I have wanted to fish for a long time, and that is Lake Manitoba. We're also joined by a couple of our Tobin friends, Marcel and Keevan here, and uh, we're gonna explore Lake Manitoba. It's got great walleyes in it, but there's some big perch. There's also a lot of burbot, which happened to be one of my favorite fish. So the mission for today is explore Lake Manitoba. We're gonna work a shoreline break down one of the edges of the shoreline here, hopefully run into some walleyes, maybe a big pout, and even some jumbo perch or ciscos. It's gonna be good. Oh, fish on. Oh, doubles. Whoa. Whoa. Now the action's Two eating them, up. Huh? Double header. Double header. <laughs> you guys set the hook at the exact same time. Exactly <laughs> the same time. I'm only fishing in about eight foot of water here, and, and those fish come in. But I still fish quite a bit off bottom. I fish about two foot off bottom. Those fish are used to roaming around finding their food, so you want to be pretty aggressive at first. You might find that hey, they need to be finesse, but I always start super aggressive and see what happens. Okay. Oh, nice perch. So that was an awesome perch. Growing up, there used to be dozens and dozens of perch you could catch in a day like that, but since the flood of 2011, the lake has kind of flip-flopped to more of a walleye fishery. Uh, you can expect to catch uh, good numbers of walleye in the dawn and dusk periods. You can pick them off during the day in the deeper water, but you can expect to catch some nice perch like that as well. So it's uh, it's kind of a all around fun day of fishing. When you approach this water, know that you're going to have to be moving unless you happen to get lucky and land on a pile of walleyes right away. And when you do land on some, remember where it was, mark it on your GPS because you'll want to be back there at prime time. Jerry and I are out here, this, this lake is massive, so everything I can do, if there's fish within the area, I want to attract them to me, and this is one great option. And I'll tell you another thing, you may, there obviously are big fish in Lake Manitoba and, and Lake Winnipeg, but small fish are more than willing to eat that bait, I'll guarantee you that. 14 inches, you know, up to 20 inches, no problem. They're gonna come in and they're, they're not afraid of that bait, and they're not afraid of a spoon this size. Uh, and again, that's more flash, it'll attract fish from, uh, offers more vibration, attract fish from a little uh, longer range, and you want to have that in your advantage. I always err on the side of, on the side of uh, uh, aggressive tactics first, and if they show, they move in and they're, they're coming in slow, then I'll refine and I'll, I'll go down to like a jigging wrap or, or a smaller spoon. But wait and let the fish tell you that second, okay, go aggressive first. Always the best option. Okay, we got another one. Oh. They're biting, boys. Oh, that's just a giant oh, perch. Nice perch. Wow. And further, putting an exclamation mark on, will, will fish eat bigger baits? Yes, they will. Nice perch. Let's go. Cool. Those are good eating, but I'm after the Waldos today. What's pretty cool about this, we got one down there again, <laughs> is that, um, you know, fishing Lake Winnipeg years ago, you could go out there and you wouldn't see too many people, but word got out that it's a tremendous walleye fishery. And it's, I mean, it's, there's a lot of people that take advantage of it, but here, it's right next door and there is literally no one here. Yeah, I, I look at this as just the beginning. The walleye fishing has been getting incrementally better every- well, I'd say it's getting better. <laughs> Look at this. All right, well, we got interrupted by a walleye, but that's always a good thing. But we were saying there's just, there's, there's nobody here and it is just a, an amazing fishery. Yeah, it's, it's getting better every year. And like right now the walleye fishing is about as good as it's ever been on this lake. And I can only see it getting better and better, much like uh, how Lake Winnipeg uh, rise to stardom has been. I see this, this lake coming around here real soon. So it's, it's got a little bit of everything. If you're looking for a day off of uh, from Lake Winnipeg, we're only, uh, you know, 40 miles across to Lake Winnipeg from this shore to shoreline. So it's yeah. uh, it's pretty cool. Two two terrific fisheries just right next to the big town, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Well, I'm gonna go catch one of those things for dinner too. Yeah. All right, no, and on. Nice. I love when you can get them on artificials. Rip and wrap happens to be one of my Cana Canadian favorites. For walleye, that is a delicious dinner. We had a great time out here. So much 
you know, to explore. And that's what I just love about fishing in Canada is you get so many great opportunities to yourself. We got to see some really cool places. There's gonna be waterfowl all over here in just about a, a month from now. The wallies are starting to push in, so this is a pretty sweet, pretty sweet little day trip we had out here on Lake Manitoba. But our trip isn't over yet. We're gonna have some more fun fishing Lake Winnipeg next. Got him, there we go. Oh, he's right. Oh, nice crappie. Look at that, there we go. Now, even though this is a walleye show, I don't mind catching a crappie every now and then. Now, there are a number of different ways to catch walleyes, and making sure you have the right rod for the job at hand is important. Let's join Joel Nelson as he shares two technique-specific rods he likes to use when targeting walleyes. Hey everybody, Joel Nelson with St. Croix Rods. We're out here, first ice, got some good fishing going on. We've been out here since early morning and the fish are biting. It's a great time to, to hole hop, right? So anytime you think about hole hopping, you're talking about jumping from place to place looking for active biters. And that's really what the game's been about. We're fishing spoons, we're fishing fast, aggressive techniques. We're still tipping with a little bit of bait, but what we're doing today is all about being technique specific. So if we're fishing those spoons, if we're fishing rapidly, a lot of times I'm not even kneeling down on the ice. I'm not even taking a chair. I'm not sitting in a house. I'm just standing on the open ice. So you need a rod that's a little bit longer. So for this specific application, I've actually got a rod called the Spoon Hopper. It's one of my favorites for first ice. It's a 36 inch medium light fast action rod. So you break that down, you gotta think length, power and action. So when I think length, I think 36, like I was saying, I'm able to, even in this wind today, drop that rod tip close to the hole. I don't have the wind blowing it. I can still detect bites really well. I have all the control that I want. And control is really important when you start to talk about the power. It's a medium light power rod, which is for this application in eighth ounce spoons, which is really about 60, 70% of what my box has in it for spoons. It's the perfect, perfect power, medium light fish is it, it's able to weight down the tip just enough and not too much so that it's sloppy and I lose control. So that perfect power is absolutely essential to fishing a spoon and that's where that spoon hopper comes in. So we talk length 36 inches, we talk power right at that medium light and then you want to talk about the action and the action is where along that blank that blank starts to deflect and it's right towards the end here. It's not an extra fast so there's a little bit of give which is nice in case we hook a bigger fish. When we're working this bait, I like the control, but I don't like it to be just on the very tip. So for spoons, this 36 inch medium light fast action rod works out just perfect. One thing I didn't talk about was my other strategy, which is with either the dead eye rod or the house rod. Both of these rods are designed to operate as a dead stick. Now this rod, the house rod, is nice because it has a full handle grip. Why that's good is because any kind of rod holder you're ever gonna fish with is gonna accept that full cork grip really nicely. That said, the dead eye rod and the split grip is really comfortable to hang on to. I really like how far up my wrist it travels. But the deal about a dead stick rod is that it has a lot of give in that tip section. So I'll hook a minnow, I'll let it free swim at the proper depth, and it might be just doing this, just constantly bobbing. And the neat part is, is no matter where I'm hole hopping with this high vis tip, I'm able to watch that rod, I'm able to watch the minnow, I'm able to watch fish interact with that minnow. When it really starts to bob quick, I know we've probably got a customer nearby, it's probably a walleye swimming around checking it out. When it does this, and then starts to bury, everybody knows what's happening then, right? So it's really nice with a bait feeder because I've got this bait feeder switch run and that fish can take as much line as it wants. And then all I have to do, it's bob down, click over, reel it, set the hook. It's a really nice experience. So that one two punch between the spoon hopper rod that I've got here when I'm jigging around first ice and hole hopping, all the way to either the house rod or the dead eye rod as that one-two punch, it's a wonderful combination. It's a wonderful way to go out and fish first ice. Go out, hole hop with a spoon hopper, drop either the house rod or the dead eye rod. I know you're gonna catch more fish using that one-two combination out there for first ice. Now here I've got the Clam 560 Thermal Hub House. 
Now this hub house is awesome. It fishes three to four anglers comfortably. It's lightweight, it's under 40 pounds, so it's easy to pack in and out on those faraway spots. Now it's fabric traps heat and reduces condensation to keep you nice and warm out on the ice. Now, if you're in the market for a good tackle storage, I've got a great option by Clam, and it's their medium jig box. Now, this box is waterproof. It's got a silicone seal to keep your baits in the best condition. It's got 250 pre-cut slots, so you can fit a bunch of different jigs and spoons in here. And it's clear and double-sided, so you can see what you have at a moment's notice. Now, this is a walleye show, and one of the best leader materials I've used out on the ice is Suffix Invisalign Fluorocarbon. I like that six or eight pound for walleyes because it's low stretch, it's basically invisible in the water, and it's super tough and durable for those big eyes. Now Clam's got a bunch of great options in their Mackie plastic line that mimic forage and work great replacing live bait. Now it has 16 different shape options in a variety of different colors. You gotta get yourself a couple of these if you're gonna be fishing for crappies, bluegills, or perch this winter. Now back to a few walleye options. Here I've got the Northland Buckshot Coffin Spoon. It's got a brass rattle to call in fish from a distance. Its shape kicks out and makes a ton of action and gives off a ton of flash in the water. It also has a bladed flapper tail to give off a little more action. Now the VMC Tumbler Spoon is another great walleye killer. Now this spoon comes in a couple different sizes, but my favorite happens to be the 1 8 ounce. Now it comes in a variety of different colors, but the really unique thing about this spoon is the shape. Its little bend gives off a really slow tumbling action and it calls in fish from a distance. You gotta get yourself a couple of these. Now early and late in the season when walleyes are really snapping, one of the best big fish baits is the Rapala Rip and Rap. Here's one in a size five called Moldy Fruit and it's one of my favorites. Now this bait is a great searching bait because it's got a lot of rattles, makes a ton of noise and really calls in from a long ways away. Now if you're looking for a reasonably priced reel with an ultra smooth drag, I've got the Daiwa Reveros LT1000. This is a great reel. Now this drag is ultra smooth. It's gonna handle any big fish you throw at it. This 1000 size is nice for ice fishing because it's compact, it fits in your hand, but you can still get a bunch of line on the spool. It's just a great option for a reasonable price. Now, one piece of equipment every ice angler needs to have are these lakes and rivers polar ice safety picks. Now you hope to never have to use it, but if you do find yourself in a situation where you do fall through, you can use these to assist to get yourself back onto safe ice. Now I'm gonna go check out. We've got a few more things to show you. I'll meet you guys back at the Yeti. Here I've got the Quad Cam HD by Aquaview. Now this underwater camera is awesome because it gives you a 360 degree view under the ice. Now it shows your direction, temp, and depth you're fishing in. You can select on a screen if you want to get a close up of that zone. And it's a must have if you're a wheelhouse angler and you want to see multiple lines, or if you're an ice angler that likes to fish with an underwater camera. Here I've got the Dakota Lithium Power Box 60. Now this box is a beast. It has over a thousand cold cranking amps. It has 60 amp hours to power all your small devices. It has six USB ports, two AC wall plugins, and it's just the ultimate power source for the outdoorsman. New to Hummingbird this year is the premium VX chip. And let me tell you, this is a must have. Now for those anglers looking to have the best mapping out on the market, the Hummingbird VX Lake Master chip is the one you gotta have. Now it's compatible with Apex, Solix, and Helix Gen 3 or newer. It has precise contours and customizable color palettes to help you find prized fishing spots faster. Now I've got two walleye rods I wanna talk to you about. The first is Tuned Up Custom Rods Precision. Now this is a medium light rod with a moderate action. It's got a solid carbon fiber blank, it comes in sizes from 28 inches up to 36 inches. It's got the built-in recoil guides, so if you're fishing outside, you can knock that ice off. And it's just a great stick for fishing in a wheelhouse or outside. Now the second rod I wanna go over is my favorite rod for hole hopping, and it's the St. Croix CCI Custom Ice. Now this is their eye razor. Now it's a 38 inch rod with an extra fast action. It's got recoil guides and it's the right length for hole hopping. You know, you can get it away from the hole, fish outside comfortably, and it's just a great walleye stick overall. Now let's get back to the action and join James Linder and Jeremy Smith as they target jumbo perch on Leech Lake. 
you know, Leech Lake is a real, such a world famous fishery for walleyes, perch, muskies, and even more recently, there's a really sort of a burgeoning population of smallmouth bass, but one thing that it's really big is ice fishing, and ice fishing specifically for perch. Look at that, sight fishing perch. It's just awesome when they're on. What do you think about that perch there? <laughs> That's a Leech Lake special there, boy. Woohoo! Oh, there's one! <laughs> Another magnum. We're right now out on the south end of the lake, and uh, Jeremy and I, Jeremy's wandering around here somewhere close by, but we're sort of cruising around on these flats, these chara flats, which are like uh, shallow sand grass and peat flats that these fish sort of rove on. And it's uh, the whole key is finding them. They're massive flats. I mean, there's these flats are literally miles of water that you can cover, and the whole key is finding the bigger. Fish. The interesting thing is out here, there's fish everywhere. Almost every hole you cut, there's going to be perch coming up the hole. Not giant, but better. And then every once in a while, you get on some jumbolinis. And the whole key is figuring out where the big ones are at. But you do have to spend some amount of time to find the bigger fish. But all of a sudden, you'll pull up on a spot, and there'll be a bunch of great big ones. Landed on a school of decent ones here. Not gigantic, but nice. Just caught one a little bit bigger than this and I let it go. And my partner in crime over there really let me have it. Perch happened to be his favorite fish to eat. So this one might have to go on the ice for him. It's been a kind of a tough day. And perch can be fish that you can catch throughout the day, of course, but it definitely pays to move around. And, and you know, perch being a fish of flats, Moves can be from here, you know, from me to James away, but really a lot of times on these flats that are eight, nine, ten feet where it's really gradual tapers, we'll move. You know, I, I was three miles up that way, James was three miles this way, and we both started just kind of cutting holes and we landed on an area where he caught a nice one. They are possibly my favorite species of fish to eat in fresh water, actually, in fresh or salt water. And then we were doing these little like 100 yard jumps and now we've kind of tightened it down into moving every 20 yards or so. So when it gets to be the middle of the day like this, you really want to move around. Mark, where, even if you just catch one of them, pay attention to where that was, kind of try to fine tune that area and then hopefully you get better conditions and you can land on uh, a really active school when it gets toward that magic, magic window in the evening. Ooh, he likes so he likes the look of it. Ooh, yeah, look at that. He's gonna come in and crush it. Crunch. There we go. Crunch. Ooh. Wop perch. Not a biggie. But he is just about of an, an edible model, actually. I think I'm gonna keep that little rascal. That's what we're after. That's more like it. One thing about perch fishing too, or you know, this could be the same with sunfish or crappies, is that when you're fishing around a lot of fish, meaning there might be, you know, in this hole, there might be a dozen fish in this area around me, and it, it becomes really important to learn how to read your fish finder and identifying what is a good fish and what are some of the smaller fish and when you're, you're you're getting pecked a lot by smaller fish too you don't want to be setting the hook on every fish that bites you want to know when it's a good fish know when it's the right time to set like right there I just got bit by a smaller perch and I could see that the signature wasn't that big and the rods went did it did it did it it's not worth me setting the hook hooking that fish taking the time to unhook it when I know that there's more big ones down there. So right now I know if it's a big fish if I've got a really strong almost maroon return. So I'll, I'll see kind of the, the big group of fish. There's a decent one down there and then um, it's not as big as I thought. But if there's a lot of like what I mean gaps if you see a bunch of gaps in between the, the marks you know that they're smaller fish but if you see that single thick return without any gaps in it you can identify that okay there's a bigger fish or it's just a stronger signal within the group you know that it's a, a larger larger perch and those are the ones you want to be targeting. Today they need bait on the jig and wrap. 
if I don't have a piece of meat on there, they're just completely denying me. So I'm going to put another chunk of minnow on and hopefully get some more. Everybody throws the minnow tails away, and that happens to be my favorite part of the minnow to use for bait. I love minnow tails way more than I like heads, and the simple reason that they stay on the hook a lot better. These fine wire hooks don't have a lot of barb to them, so it's pretty easy for it to slide off, and that minnow tail meat seems to stick on that little barb to me a little bit, a little bit better. Boom, there we go. Secret weapon. Here's a, here comes a big, big, big one right now. Ooh, there's a biggie right there. There's a big one. There's a big one. There we go. Ooh, that's a little bit better one. There you go. Not too bad. That's a real perch. Right there. Come here, buddy. Ooh. Real aggressive. I'm actually using right now just an EMC uh, rattlestone. Pretty good sized bait, almost a walleye sized bait, but the, the thing is what I'm trying to do is selectively uh, target the biggest perch that are in these little packs so that bigger profile bait seems to work better. But what I've been doing is I usually either tip a couple of waxies or a minnow head. No, right on the bubble perch. Well, I guess you're always learning something. And one thing that we definitely learned today is Moving pays off. You definitely got to be on the move, and you got to be patient. And we got You got to sort through sort through fish. In a lake like Leech, this lake still has tremendous numbers of big perch in it. And some years, you come out here, and it's just like every one of them is a jumbo. You can't believe it. It's just one after the other. But I'll tell you one thing: there are a lot of up and coming perch in this fishery too. It's absolutely amazing. We've got a Yeti fish house set up over there. It's pretty cool. We've got the Mega Live on the big screen. We've got a camera down there. And the thing is just absolutely stuffed full of perch. There's like 20 on the screen at, at all times. So it's pretty cool to see how many fish are really in the, in the system. It's absolutely full of fish right now. Yeah, there you oh, go. Oh, nice one, huh? Sort of intriguing the way we're catching them. You know, like last year we were up here, we got on these just big mega schools, the great big ones. But today we've been sort of wor working around, just getting one or two nice ones out of a given spot, and then we have to move again, and then we'll get, we'll get one or two. We'll catch some number of small ones, but we're not getting on one spot where they're all big. But the thing is, is they're they're tallying up right they now. Are, Believe yeah. it or not, when you look at the sled over here, <laughs> my wife will be pleasantly surprised when we get home. I assure you that. <laughs> you know. All right, let's get back to the walleye action. Now we're going to head to Red Lake and join Jeff Simpson and James Linder as they show you how to effectively and efficiently find and catch walleyes. You know, one of the real keys of catching fish is finding fish. Actually, right now we're on Red Lake and uh, Red Lake is just monstrous flats. And what we're doing right now, we just got out and we're just initially started cutting some holes, but the real key is to find bait. And these fish are actually rove over these giant flats. And what we're using right now is Mega Live to find bait fish and hopefully walleyes. And you can see right here, directly that way, about 35 feet away, there's probably a great big school of perch or shiners right out here. And then we're seeing some intermittent uh, bigger fish blips off the bo bottom. But you can look at this right here and it's quite interesting that there is bait here. That's one thing that these fish are just constantly roving around on these flats. So Jeff, I know one thing, 36 feet that way. That's my cue, isn't it? <laughs> so you gonna go cut a hole over When you're the auger man. And that is the cool part of our system. We'll go over there, we'll drill that hole, and then James will go scan that, and we'll really kind of dial in where we, where we think that the optimal spots are gonna be. So James says 30 feet that way, that means go. <laughs> Like James Linder and I are up here doing the early ice walleye thing, and you know generally that's a that's a really good time to get out and ice fish. But as soon as that those cold fronts start moving through, you can you can come the first few days after that, and it can be tough. Well, uh, we we got here and it's just an absolute beautiful day, and we're, we're moving around, spotting lots of fish, but they're they're pretty inactive, coming up, looking at the bait and swimming away. And then you know the wind has come up here later in the day, so. We brought along our, our portable shelters, popped those up, and got the heater on, everything nice and comfortable in here. 
And when that happens, also a great time to put down a dead stick, put down a bonus rod. And when these fish are, will move in, I'm seeing fish move in in three to five fish schools. And I, I might get one jigging and you also get a bonus fish on that, on that dead stick rod. So that fishing inside the shack definitely has its advantages, especially when the, when the weather and the wind conditions increase. Wall toss. <laughs> cool. The rascals. What's that? Is she? Cool. Well, those fish now, like, there's a fish right down there right now, so I gotta get back down there, but they, they come through in schools. And when that's the case, boy, you gotta get, get back down on those fish. So when you're up here on these first ice walleyes, um, generally a pretty proactive pretty aggressive bite, so really a lot of fun. Those fish move in on sonar and come in and grab your bait. Oop, that, that dead stick. Ooh, nice one. Come here, buddy, ooh. Come here, buddy. Come here, come here. Trying to get his head in the hole. There you go. Not a biggie, but it did stick. It works. Hmm. This guy here is about a perfect of an eater. He's staring at the minnow. Oh, there he comes from right there. Whoo! On the board again. Rascal walleyes. Little rascal walleyes. <laughs> That's so cool. That first ice bite can be dynamite to say the least. You know, you get these, these fish are really active early in the early in the winter, and if you can get out on these lakes and get get a pulse on the bite, boy, it is a good time to be out on the ice for sure. And they. They wolf it. I'll tell you that right now. Let me get up at my little picker. There we go. Using that new coffin spoon from Northland, and it has a rattle in that. I used that last year, and it is a, a great option. And they're coming through, and it's really fun when you're using the sonar. You can see them come in, whoa, they smack that thing. It's, it's a hoot. You know what is cool about using a dead stick? in combination with your sonar while you're jigging is that when a fish moves in, you're like, oh, a fish is below me. And it may look like it's right below your jig rod. Well, that fish was just hanging there. And when I lifted it up, it stayed on the, on the dead stick rod. I can actually see that bait flicker, even though it's two foot away from where my son transducers go down in the hole. So what I did, I let it sit there and he did not hit that. I lifted it above him like a foot and a half and started jigging more aggressively. And that fish just rushed over and, and engulfed the bait. So that, that's the one thing about having this, this dead stick that might be, if they're a little off, they might come up and hit that. You might attract them in with your jigging rod and they'll, they'll fade off and take the dead stick rod. So it's, it's a, it's a one-two punch. Hit it. He got it, he got it. Huh? The dead stick produces. <laughs> and up here, it's a little, one of those little eater rascals right there. <laughs> nice, that's your classic, that's a little small, we'll let that one go. But it's another, your, your classic example of how that dead stick will produce bonus fish for you. You know, I, I believe I've been jigging pretty aggressively, you know, calling those fish in. And they're a little off today, and so they might come over. I saw that they, the fish come over. And look at the, the jigging minnow, the jigging rod, but then, you know, tailed off and I had that dead stick down and it, it went over and grabbed that, grabbed that dead stick. So, bonus fish. Go down the hole, please. There you go. <laughs> Slow. <laughs> cool. Yeah, let's go on. Yeah, so I got, you know, just, 
using. You can use a jig, you can use a spoon, whatever you need, but you need to have that bait anchored. So I'm just tipping this. I'm using the coffin spoon and I'm using a, a pink and white coffin spoon. And that's another thing in this, in this, on certain bodies of water, color can be a real thing. And I've kind of dialed in with gold and, and red or pink. What I like to do is basically I reverse hook this minnow. So I'm gonna hook it right behind the dorsal and that will allow when the, when this is this weight, it'll fight against that weight. So it'll try to swim away and swim away. So when a fish comes in, it's naturally gonna swim away and pull the bait, but it's gonna drift back. Because it's weighted, it's not gonna get too far away and those fish can ambush it. One thing that's really critical, like for this dead stick rod, this is a pretty specific rod. This is actually a, a 30 inch tundra, but it's what it is. St. Croix Tundra, it's, but it's very, very light, see, and it's a very, very parabolic action, so it's quite soft, and that gives me all the uh, deflection I need to watch it, and I'm, you'll notice that I've just taken it on a bucket, or I could have it in a rod holder. Actually, I like a bucket like this because you have direct access to pick it up really pretty quickly. The bucket sort of maintains it in its position, but that really soft action because all of a sudden the fish grab the bait, and almost every time it doesn't go down hard. It just bends down like this, goes down softly like this, and then you just lift up and you got them. But it works really good. It's not only for, uh, in this case, I'm fishing for walleyes, but we do the same thing for crappies, trout. Uh, we use a very similar rod like that. Even in the Great Lakes for those great big brown trout, you almost fish an exact carbon copy of that type of style of fishing. There he is, he is, he's right on the minnow. He's right on the minnow. Got him, there, yep, there we go. The dead stick produces again. Ooh, he's got a sportier one there. <laughs> Let's see. It's a, a Red Lake special. <laughs> it's why people come up here because it's just an amazing bite for perfect eaters. Oop, come here, buddy. Ooh. Ooh, come here, buddy. Oh, look at this guy right here. He's a perfect, perfect. Ooh, he may be a little bit too perfect. <laughs> this is, look at that. You see how that treble hook gets him? All you do is lift up. The real key with that dead sticking, we'll keep this guy here. This, I can keep one over 17, and this is my over. A beautiful fish, though. Look at that guy. Gorgeous, gorgeous fish. Beautiful animal, aren't they? These guys here, you can see one thing. <laughs> In Red Lake, they got a lot of food. Now that wraps up this episode of Angling Buzz Ice. Make sure to head to our website where you can sign up for our newsletter. We'll also be releasing new content each week on our social platforms. Thanks for watching and stay safe out on the ice. Well,